Elden Ring has a lot of weapons, but it actually only has a few boss weapons. The special weapons that come from Remembrance Souls that you can go to the Two Fingers and swap into whatever you want. They all come with a very unique design and unique Ashes of War. But which are the best for each style of play? The most versatile, the ones with the best Ashes of War or best passives, and obviously the coolest designs. Today I put together my top five, so let's get into it. For our best boss strength weapon, and I think a lot of people are going to be happy with this. It's, of course, the Star Scourge Great Sword, or should I say Great Swords? Quite a strange one, actually. Quite a strange one, because you get two of them when you equip it. As you can see, I only have the one weapon in one slot, and when I use light attacks, I actually end up using both weapons. If I try to use L1, which would normally use dual-wielded power stance weapons and use both of them, all that happens is I block. So to do a two-hand or multiple weapon plunge, I have to press a light attack. As you can see, it comes with physical and magic damage, which will ultimately uh, accrue to the total AR of this weapon. And it has a shockingly good B-grade scaling to say that it also scales with intelligence and dex as well. When we look at the AR, you have to consider that this is just a one weapon. 836 is a very, very solid AR for a boss strength weapon like this. You have to consider, right, I'm using two weapons, so I'm hitting those big 800 hits twice, not just once. So that could be said to be around 1,600 AR, which is pretty insane. You might be wondering, well, okay, Okay, hang on a minute. Isn't there a just strength scaling weapon that comes from a boss weapon? Godfrey's axe should be the best strength weapon pick, right? No, it's honestly not great. It incredibly has a C scaling with strength, which makes no sense considering it doesn't have something like intelligence like the Star Scourge Greatsword has. And its AR is lower when you're two-handing it as well. It does have the unique Ash of War that does give you some attack power, pumping up to over 900, but its moveset is just very poor. I do not think it's a good weapon in PvE or PvP. It's just not very good. And its stats are just confusingly low. It really should have a higher scaling on its strength. Meanwhile, again, the Star Scourge Greatsword, reliable, solid, great moveset, and great stats. And it comes with the Star Caller Cry Ash of War, which stomps down, pulls enemies in, and then you do the big slam for a reasonable amount of FP. For its design as a boss weapon, it is literally his weapons that he uses. They look incredible. It's got that cool design on the blades itself. The fact that you get two for the price of one is confusing and brilliant. A lot of people really, really swear by these weapons, and it's easy to understand why. In PvP, these great swords are quite interesting. Their moveset is quite simple and you know there's not much to it so you don't have like a lot of options but they're so dangerous that when you trade with them you're obviously going to get hit by that second one which is going to be huge huge very scary damage when it comes to the ash of war yeah it's unlikely you're going to get off that second part of the ash of war the explosion right it's very easy to see coming but I actually think the pull-in, the first part of it, does a surprising amount of damage and can catch people out, has good range. And obviously the explosion on the follow-up can also catch people out if they're not expecting it to be as long range as it actually is, like this guy was. I've actually surprised myself by having that much fun with these weapons in PvP, so I definitely recommend them. But uh, let's try it in PvE. When it comes to actually landing this AoE, we've got the pull, and then we've got the slam, and if you've got a bit of poise, perhaps running Bull Goat's Talisman, you're going to get this off. Certainly more consistently with high poise gear than if not. Against a boss bar and an actual enemy. Well, maybe I can get it off as it begins the fight. 500-ish damage. There's the slam. 2,300. That's not bad at all. And with weapons like this, you've got jumping, plunges. It's just, yeah... This is a good weapon set. The fact you get two for just the 20 weight that it actually costs. You're going to have to commit the 15 intelligence to actually run these. And it might be wise to run some mines so you've actually got more Ash of War potential in PvE. It's not so important in PvP. Yeah, I've been really impressed with these. Definitely one of the better boss weapons. And your great pick for strength, despite Logic saying, yeah, Godfrey's Axe, that really should be the strength weapon. For our best dex boss weapon, I think this is an obvious one. There isn't one even remotely close, right? It's the Hand of Melania, the katana that Melania uses. A really cool design 
because it's literally the weapon that is attached to her that she kind of transforms her with her arm throughout the fight. A subtle gold weapon that is very long and actually almost as long as the very long katanas, the washing poles, the nagakiba. Now, of course, the downside of a weapon like this is we cannot make it keen to make it better with deck scaling. We cannot make it a bleed weapon to scale with that. So its base stats are its base stats. It scales at a B rating with dex compared to the A rating that you could get on your other katanas using Keen. And it has slightly less range than say a Nagakiba for the same weight. So why would you use this weapon? Why do I consider it a good weapon? It's because of the Ash of War, of course. Waterfowl Dance is the incredible iconic attack that Melania uses against you. Swinging in all of these attacks, leaping forward and ultimately slashing the air apart. While you don't have the exact same ridiculous tracking that she has, you can free aim this and that can be incredible in AoE scenarios or in PvP where you've got someone caught in a tight area like a corridor. Interestingly, this weapon is not really worth two-handing, which you might think it would be, because it's not scaling from strength or to knee rating. That power that you get from two-handing isn't really beneficial. The moveset is not significantly better. In my main build, what I do is I actually run two Nagakibas, and then in my main hand, I swap to the Hand of Melania mid-combat to basically pull out the surprise Ash of War, which can certainly be beneficial in gank scenarios, in 1v2s, in tight areas. I consider it a top pick to swap to during combat for your dex builds. The downside of the Ash of War is it's very obvious and easy to avoid by just running away from it. So pulling it out in an obvious way in a duel is probably not going to be reliable or consistent. Where I see this being beneficial is, is a surprise attack, something to pull out when they've committed really hard against you, or again, you're in a 1v2 scenario where they're a bit overconfident and you can pull this out and surprise them. In PvE, it is a great AoE ability, as you can see, as no surprise there. And with the talismans I'm running, I'm of course getting more attack power the more successive hits I hit in a short period. This Ash of War is perfect for that. Against bosses, if you get this Ash of War off, you can clean out health bars. I mean, look at the damage. It's super satisfying. It's super flashy. The sword looks cool. This is obviously my top pick for Dex, for a good reason. For a best arcane boss weapon, I don't think it's even up for debate. I think this is a straightforward answer. This incredible spear is Mogwin's sacred spear. It is the weapon that is used against you by Moog himself. And of course, it is the weapon he uses Nihil against you, which you can use in the exact same way for a huge AoE around you dealing blood loss or blood buildup, which is huge damage when it procs. Of course, blood is nuts right now, especially when you're running an arcane build, which is this is perfect for. Which also, of course, when you use it, buffs up the weapon, increasing its damage. This is a fire-based weapon, so you're going to get some bonus fire damage while it is, of course, buffed up. It has 718 AR. With my interesting stats right now, this is to make this build work for PvP. That AR goes up to 748 when you, of course, use the... Ash of War to buff up its damage to get some more fire damage on the weapon. So yeah, a really solid AR for a weapon that isn't based on dex or even strength in some cases with spears and is again a, a spear, a really reliable spear. It's got the running R2, you know, you've got your plunge attacks, the rolling R1. It's a quick weapon with long range and an incredibly cool and versatile, useful Ash of War for bleed build up. I mean it. Uh, <laughs> in PvP, this thing is a menace. You combine it with the swarm of flies, that pressures them, and then you create that buffer, that area where they're kind of trapped. It's either take the swarm of flies or take the near heal. What's it going to be? It's going to do huge damage. And as you can see, it fully catches people. It, ca it catches them out with full bleed. It kills them. And then, hey, if you get a bleed proc, if you're running certain talismans over the white mask, you can get more damage. And now you have the fire buff as well on the weapon itself, which is a really solid speed with a great Musa. I really, really enjoy this weapon in PvP and think it's one of the, the best picks that you can go for for Arcane in general, not just as a boss weapon. When it comes to AoE, if you can get this off in PvE, you're not going to get interrupted. My god, the range of it, the damage of it through blocks. I mean, they walked into it when it was basically done and it still killed them. In boss fights, that L2 damage is really respectable. I can do it from far away. 1,500, 2,000 damage. I got interrupted. Let's see if I can just do it again. He walks into it. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. I'm only getting off the first two procs, not even the third hit. Now, yes, I won't lie and say that's going to be easy to get off in boss fights consistently. 
but you can see the damage is pretty damn reliable. Even if you just go for the first proc, get the fire buff, and then leave it until you see a really good opportunity, that works pretty damn well. And now for my top pick for boss weapons, flat out. This is, of course, the Blasphemoth Blade, and it is an incredible weapon for three major reasons. We have its design, which is absolutely gnarly and horrific, the writhing hands of the family of Rikard and the, the serpent family. Then you have the Ash of War, the Taker's Flames, which is a long-range, very powerful Ash of War that cleans house in a weekly for pve and then in pvp you can catch people out for a proper vigor check with this thing and it's well worth your fp and then thirdly you have the passive effect of this weapon where you get health back when you defeat an enemy meaning what you can do is instead of running it as your main hand you could run it as an offhand you could have it equipped and just have it on your back not even thinking about it while you run a main weapon getting the perks of that weapon's passive if you have the endurance for it brilliant for progressing the game then because you're going to be able to sustain through levels as you're taking hits and exploring statistically it's just a great option a b scaling faith weapon with c on strength and see on decks that is really solid we're talking about 801 ar on a great sword and you know like i say you could have this in offhand you could be power stancing which i would actually recommend that's a lot of damage for something that's so versatile it's wonderful as a weapon this moveset a great sword moveset very reliable i like to have this with an offhand shield that i can parry with and you can pull off some nice critical hits from that but it's the ash of war man that flame attack you <laughs> you basically give them a all right now dodge this lol situation and if they don't I, again it's a serious vigor check this does a lot of damage with the right build you could be one-shotting people with just the single ash of war land you can free aim it so they end up rolling or running into it trying to avoid it certainly great for invasions where you're dealing with 1v2s as well as a fire weapon it's really reliable in your boss fights but that ash of war look at that 1400 hit from downtown if you don't miss like me it's pretty good damage against an enemy like this it's just wonderful it actually staggered him. It staggered him. It's ludicrous. Oh, oh, still alive. Still alive. There we go. Again, brilliant weapon all around. One of the best, if not the best boss weapon. Design-wise, absolute peak. Mechanically, great moveset as a great sword. You can use it in so many different ways because of its passive effect and its damage. That Ash of War, so good. And for our last pick... Our wild card for these lists has got to be the Sacred Relic Sword. The final boss weapon that I think a lot of people are aware of at this point due to the, you know, the rune farm strategy, which is where I'm standing right now. Watch me miss the front guy. No, I got him. Cool. Yeah, it's a huge cone AoE that just goes like a wave. I mean, it's literally called Wave of Gold and does huge damage, holy damage, and perfect for rune farming, right? But the question is, is this actually good in pve and pvp statistically we have a dex b grade and then you have the faith at c we're talking about just under 800 ar which is pretty comparable to say pretty comparable to the rikard sword right and i do really like its design i mean what it's made of is disgusting but visually it looks really cool in that that glow that builds up from the base of the blade to the tip I really like looking at this and just having it on your shoulder when you're walking around. Really cool for a Holy Knight style of gameplay. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, in PvP, it's kind of what I was expecting, right? Where you have a really nice moveset with the weapon. The base moveset's really nice and I really enjoy it. But then we have the Ash of War, right? And that's kind of what it's all about. The, the Wave of Gold. It is a huge range cone. Now in PvP, that means you're going to catch people if they do not roll it. If they run sideways or try to roll sideways and panic, it has a good chance of hitting them and it does do good damage. But then you look at the more common scenario. Okay, there's this wave coming at me if I just roll straight through it and it's behind me now, that's it. <laughs> you know, every time someone's kind of on it or aware of how this Ash of War works, it doesn't work. The moment they don't know what's going on, it has a good chance of hitting them. But that's not a really reliable thing for me. And while I think the weapon is really cool in PvP and the Ash of War is neat, it's 
good for invasions, I reckon. When you're dealing with 1v2s, you're catching people out, or there's a sort of battle, a 2v2 happening, there it would be really good. But in duels, it's definitely predictable, but still, I still think very fun to use. But just because it's not literally the best pick in PvP does not mean it is not a great weapon, and I can understand why so many people brought it up in the Faith Weapon build. I mean, come on, that is never not satisfying what I just did to those guys. Take this to an actual boss, where the Ash of War is actually going to be more reliable, you can step back at range, get it off, and they're obviously going to just take the hit from it. If I do it at medium range, I can still get it off through my poise. It gives me enough to work with. Yeah, it's solid. You've got really good range, really good opportunities to land that. It's a consistent Ash of War in PvE. So for your get general gameplay, your mob clear, your boss fighting, it is really good. It's just a bit unreliable in PvP. So those are my top picks for the boss weapons. We have a nice versatile mix for your strength weapon, for your dex weapon, your arcane weapon. Uh, and in general, I think the designs of all of these are very cool and very satisfying to look at and use. Let me know what you thought. And actually, what do you think? Is there any other boss weapon you would have included in this list? If you have enjoyed the video though and would like to see more of this type of content, please let me know with a like on the video. But until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.